Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and here's yet another tutorial and in fact the last tutorial on creating an N Queens solder. In this tutorial we're going to wrap things up rather rapidly. We're going to focus in on a few pieces of code that I've already written in. I provided tutorials on graphics and such before and so there's no need to re-explain all those things. So I'll just quickly go over a couple of things I've implemented and you should be able to uh, understand them and remember that you can always download my code as it is at the end of each video uh, right in it below in the links in the comments uh, or in the description below the video and so uh, you can uh, grab this code for yourself uh, and then we're going to focus on the main event for this video which is implementing keyboard events so when I hit the arrow keys uh, you know the car moves around or something like that. But in this time we're going to be focusing specifically on this program and using them in a practical way. So let's quickly get started here. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is in the search.java uh, class I have uh, made a few uh, changes. One of them being I have made it runnable. So it can become a thread. It can be a separate process. And in order to do that I needed to have a method called run which uh, has a few interesting lines of code. For instance, it sets the cursor to the wait cursor, which is basically that spinning cursor thing. Uh, on an older computer, it would be the hourglass that keeps uh, uh, dropping down and rotating around and stuff like that. Um, and then I set it back to default. Uh, whenever you set your cursor, you always want to uh, set it back to whatever normal is, which is pretty much that. So when it's over text, it's that eye-shaped cursor like it is now. Once over on the right here by the scroll bar, it turns into an arrow key and so on. So, and then I also added a little line here, which gives a, the computer, a, makes the computer make a beeping sound. Assuming, I suppose, if you're, uh, you have speakers hooked up and such like that. And also counts the time that it's taken uh, to search uh, from this map. And the master controller method does the searching here and it resets the hash maps and so on gets it all ready and goes through the search method um, on the n by n size board. So uh, then I have done a few changes also on the user interface class. Uh, one of the things that I have done here is added a few lines of code such as this one. Basically this code centers the frame. So instead of a window opening like, uh, uh, let's see, uh, here it opens in the center, but in Java, let's say default was upper left hand corner. I believe that is default for opening a frame. Now it'll center it in the screen. So it'll find the screen size and the window size and center it all up nicely. Um, and then uh, we adjust the square size to the size available. So for instance, if I were to open Arena, I could show you an example of this. Here we have a big board. And when I shrink it in size, or they give it less room, all the squares get smaller because they have to fit in a tighter area. And so uh, it sets this square size to the size of the window, to fit the window. All right. Now I also did a few other things down here. There are three methods below. One is computer think. And it basically, because this is search is now a thread, I made it runnable. Now we uh, have to create this activate this thread and then redraw once we're done that. And then, whoops, and then we have new dimension uh, and when we resize the board, let's say from an n by n board being a 4x4 four four board to a 5x5 five five board, each square has to be slightly smaller because you need more squares in the same screen size amount of space. So the squares have to be adjusted accordingly. And then I have the third method that I have added, third and final method, which is get solution. And what it does is it stores, because the hash map is filled with, let's say, a, a hundred solutions that it has found. And we want to be able to look through every one of those solutions. So we want to look at the 47th solution. What we do is, when we say get solution, we'll have to set this current H key, which is just an integer to uh, let's say 47 and then it will take the 47th uh, array on this hash map and place it into the active queen board array 
and the screen will always be displaying whatever the active queen board array is. So uh, when we change it to the 30th solution, the active queen board array board will change, and so will the screen. So I also added a few things to the paint component. In fact, a lot of things. Uh, some of them are uh, I put in a grid there, and I've put in a few lines of code and now we'll show queens where it finds solutions in the array so it turns the array into a graphical look and you can feel free to look through all the code there and then I added a bunch of text here which shows st statistics uh, excuse me statistics on the current board such as how many solutions it found, how many, solution, how many positions it thought about before it found all the solutions, how much time it's taken so far, which solution I'm currently looking at, so on. So when I hit run, you will see it now shows queens. If you don't see these queens, that means you need to put uh, the uh, picture, which you can download in the link in the description. Uh, you need to put that picture somewhere where your computer can recognize it, where this program can recognize it. And that would be uh, found in this line of code right here, number 65, where you set uh, um, the, the path of this uh, picture, chesspieces.png. And I happen to have that picture at that location. So now what we want to do is set up what this thing, uh, what the text says here in white. We want up and down keys to navigate through the solutions, first, second, third, fourth, fifth solutions, and right and left arrow keys to adjust the grid size, and right being increasing the grid size, left being decreasing the grid size. So how do we do this? Well, all our work is going to be done in the paint component, sort of like it will be similar to this add component listener, which checks if the window is being resized, because uh, I have this code so that when I resize the window, and I've already explained this in other tutorials, uh, when I resize it, the screen resizes uh, accurately as well in uh, proportion. So we need to create something like this, something that listens to the movements of the keyboard. And what we will say for that is very simple here. Uh, this see, whoops, get my typing skills here, right? This dot, um, actually, keyboard, focus manager dot get current keyboard focus manager dot, a bunch of little, whoops, there we go, uh, dot add keyboard event dispatcher and in here we'll say new key event dispatcher just write in all this code now it tosses in a bunch of stuff here in purple uh, and what we can do is just delete this throw line there we go and now we're set up. Um, one thing it will need is a return statement. Um, it by default says to return false, but we would rather return true. Uh, this is a fairly important line of code just to make sure you have. Now, just like this uh, uh, resizer thing where E is the, can, be, can find the size of the uh, window and all this stuff, E records the data about what is happening on the keyboard. So mount, certain key is down, certain key is up, uh, all sorts of different things. So what we'll need to say is if we first want to know is a key being pressed. So we say if e dot and then get id. And if the id equals key event dot key whoops, underscore pressed. If it is pressed, do all this stuff. Um, and if it's not pressed, we just don't do anything. So if it's pressed, then we also need to know another thing. 
do we have solutions available? Because if it doesn't, hasn't found any solutions yet, we don't want to be able to look through the first solution, second solution, third solution, and so on. Um, so we could have errors there. So we'll say if not search dot hmap solutions dot is empty. So if it's not empty, then we'll do all this stuff. All right. Now let's say how do we how do we ask the computer is the down arrow being pressed? We know something's being pressed if we've made it here because if key pressed is true. But how do we know if it's the down arrow? Well, here's what we say. We'll say if e dot get key code equals key event dot VK stands for virtual keyboard down. VK down. So that says, is the keyboard down? It doesn't say arrow key down, it's just called down. And this basically sets, says, okay, the arrow key is being go, going down. So now how do we adjust to the next, uh, how do we show the next solution? Well, what we're going to do is start out with finding out how many solutions are there in total. And we'll call that length. We'll set that to length and we'll say equals search dot hmap solutions dot size is the simplest way to do it. Very easy. And now we need to know um, when we say down, we will be increasing or going to the next solution. So from the first to the second to the third to the fourth. However, what if there are only, what if the size was only four? then we want to go back to the first solution. We want to wrap around um, to the first one. So we need to have a little if statement for that. We need to say if length minus one equals current H key. So in that case, we need to set it back to the zero. So we set current H key, whoops, equal to zero and then we say get solution because remember to get we need to store that solution in an in the active clean board and redraw that's what that method did so that is all written right there and then we need to say else because we might not be at the very last one otherwise then just uh, current H key plus plus and get whoops, solution. There we go. Now we're going to copy all this code here and make a few changes. One of them being if VK up. Now we're talking about the up arrow. However, we want to change a couple things. We want to not, we don't want to ask are we at the end. Instead we want to say are we at whoops, zero? Are we at zero? And if we're at zero, then we need to set it to length minus one. So this is pretty much the opposite. So if we've gone three, two, one, zero, now we need to go to the very last option. Otherwise, set it down one and then get solution. There we go. Now we've implemented up and down. Let's try running this. See if we haven't made too many mistakes. All right, you can't see my keyboard, but notice the screen opens in the middle. Everything's nice. Here's all my stats. When I go up arrow, it goes to the second solution. You can see right here which solution we're on. Okay, up, and when I go down, obviously when it's alternating between two, it's hard to see which direction it's going up or down, but both arrow keys switch to the other solution, which is good. All right, now we need to set the right and left arrow keys to resize the grid. So what we'll do is we will, this will be a very quick piece of code. We'll say if 
e dot get key code equals key event well, key event dot v vk left just like so very much similar and if it's left then we have to set search dot n plus plus remember search dot n is this n right here which is the size of the board it starts out as four so we set it to n and then we say new dimension which resizes the grid size and uh, and calls the search function again. Now I'll just copy this piece of code and again now we change this to right <clears throat> and then we say it would be minus minus however we don't want to get grids smaller than the size of four because when it's a three and stuff there aren't solutions and anyways we only go as small as four. So what we have to say is if search dot n is greater than four then do all of this stuff. If it's not greater than four that means it is four and then you shouldn't go down further. So now when I run it and again you can't see my keyboard but I will hit the right arrow um, and nothing happens. Ah, I did the left arrow and it went bigger. That is the opposite of what I wanted. So I'm going to do right and left. There we go. So now when I hit the right arrow, it gets bigger. When I hit the left arrow, it gets smaller and it stays small. So now we have a 5x5 five five board, did a research automatically, found 10 solutions, 200 positions were analyzed. When I go up and down, now you see I can go, whoops, uh, down to the second, third, fourth, fifth, and up arrows back to the fourth, fifth, third, second, first. And you can see it wraps right around. If I held it, it would just go in circles either way. <clears throat> now when I go bigger boards, you can see it's very fast. And here's another thing. Uh, this is really the beauty of hash maps is that they found so many solutions so fast. Um, it's not being bogged down by the number of solutions and the amount of things it has to memorize as much as it would have been if we had stored a, some huge array or stored everything to a text file. So you can see in the 9 by 9 it's just instantly, at least on my computer, finding uh, 352 solutions. Same with a 10 by 10. Even an 11 is taking 0 seconds at 2.6 thousand. Here's 14,000. There we go. Now you'll see the screen updates every second there. And that was due to our timer draw uh, class, which updates the screen every second so we can see progress as it's happening. So here you see we have, let me see if that is right. Yes, 59 million positions were considered. And it found 73,000 solutions. So that's just the speed at which I was able to think, which is absolutely um, uh, a very, very speedy thing. Uh, you could perhaps make it faster, but very fast. So I hope that you have found uh, these tutorials helpful and that you will be able to use some of the methods that we have learned in whatever you're making from games to programs to uh, anything you want. And feel free to modify and improve upon and provide comments on these videos to make this tutorial uh, better for everyone else. Until next time, enjoy Java.